Good afternoon, everyone. Just waiting for Facebook Live to let us know that we are indeed live. So, <laughs> welcome to Saturday Night, Live, Saturday Night Live at 5 with CG and Buffalo and myself, Pastor Kwame. Welcome again to the end of another week. Welcome to a time of just winding down our week and being in reflection thinking about how we are going to end our week and what self-care we're doing for ourselves and how we're going to be in community and the importance of what that means. It means getting out of our four walls, however they may look, and getting out into the streets and out with each other. We are all beloved of Creator. We come from Creator. To Creator we will return. And while we're here, we have a purpose and we're to live out our purpose. So if you're seeing this live stream, I am Pastor Kwame. I'm the pastor of Community of Good Neighbors. We are a faith-based organization located in the heart of downtown Buffalo, but we are part of the community of the East Side, and we've been doing this since August 2021, being fully integrated in the community with our mobile food pantry, fresh collard greens, and other healthy things. And spoiler alert, so I had to get our mobile food pantry bus weighed. Um, Monday I'm getting inspected, and as soon as they mark everything off okay, uh, I'm running to the DMV office and throwing all the paperwork at them and say, give me my plates, give me my registration so we can celebrate. Um, we're almost, we're this close, we're this close, y'all. Um, it indeed has been a year, and you, we have to be patient with all things. So, yeah, so that is, <laughs> um, and the academic year is winding down. And I actually was just at Dualville on Thursday doing an interfaith uh, service for them. The first, actually the first time they've had an interfaith service. Normally they do Catholic masses as they get closer to the graduation, but this was an interfaith service and it was really great. The first time they were doing it and I'm thankful to be welcomed into the Dualville community um, and look forward to doing some partnership with them in the fall. Um, doing a little campus ministry, that's our sort of campus ministry work, and um, to be clear, also getting volunteers for CGN for our mobile food pantry. Uh, Friday, I was at University of Buffalo, so UB, um, with the Department of African Studies, which happens to be my husband's department. They asked me to come and do the rite of libations, um, and just be with them in a time as they remember um, the Jefferson 10, as we're calling them, um, the victims of the 514 mass shooting, which I don't know if you can see my shirt. I'll scan it out a little bit. So this is faithfully bringing forth justice. This is Voice Buffalo's t-shirts that we got. Um, so we have been, a number of us as faith leaders, have been on the east side yesterday, today, and some will also be on there tomorrow. Um, as Sunday actually marks 514. Um, the day in which the Jefferson 10 were murdered by white supremacy and systemic racism was coming into the neighborhood, into a grocery store, and really in a very hostile, negative way, traumatizing the community of the East Side. And so, as faith leaders, we, we had, there's a number of things that were happening, but one of the things we did today and yesterday was that we did faith walks. So there were a couple different shifts we could take. I took the morning shifts, both yesterday and today. We just walked in the neighborhood, um, handed out little flyers that talked about the calming spaces. So we also have a calming space element. Um, so we have spaces, four spaces. It was Say Yes Buffalo. They're building the Resource Center, uh, the Johnny B. Wiley Center, and a library, the Merriweather Library, uh, which is not too far from the actual Topps grocery store. Those are places where there were calming spaces where people would have like cards and books and coloring books and all those things. People just to come to sit and just to be in community. Um, the whole purpose of Faith Leaders walking was so we could walk together uh, and just be that presence. Not, we weren't asking for anything from the people we were interacting with, we just letting them know that we're here, that we knew it was gonna be a, a horrendous weekend that we knew all sorts of people were going to come into the community and we wanted them at least to know that we were here being real 
and just being present, being active listening. That's something I learned in seminary, active listening. That means without expecting anything back from the person, just allowing the person to vent, to cry, to whatever, to ask for a hug, for prayer, um, whatever. Or, you know, simply just to pass on the message, you know, we're here, we see you. And so I think that was the most important thing about what we were doing. So Friday was our dry run. And there weren't a lot of people out, but we did encounter people. And today, I have mixed emotions. So, we are walking as faith leaders, both ecumenical and interfaith. And I, I need to stress that. Um, organizations like Voice Buffalo try to really be as interfaith as possible, ecumenical and interfaith. Realizing that not everybody identifies as following Jesus. And not everybody goes to church or synagogue or mosque or what have you not everybody is going to be in tune like that and again the important thing for us as faith leaders is to be present especially this weekend because it's also mother's day tomorrow so we need to be present just to say we see you that's it as we were passing out flyers and talking to folks about the calming spaces, because that was the only thing that was on the flyer, and I'm sorry I don't have a copy of the flyer with me, um, it just said calming spaces. Here are the locations this weekend. And we had run into two sisters who actually, one who had been in the store into Tops about 10 minutes before all the shooting happened, and one who was right across the street at a store when all of it happened. And they were like, we need this more than just this weekend. There are people still traumatized. They will not go on the tops. In fact, the community organizer for, for Voice Buffalo, Dee Dee, um, says she has not been in tops in a whole year since all that happened. And we walked by there Friday. She was very overcome with emotion. I think we also need to realize that the people who are doing this work, like community organizers, like mental health professionals who may have been impacted by the shooting, also need self-care. So keeping it light, right? We encountered a church. I'm not going to name the church. Because one thing I don't do is slam. Um, and I have to realize, um, even though that it bothers me as an ordained clergy, that we have opportunists, even in our own neighborhood, that will take advantage of a situation for their own gain. So there was a church community. We had approached a group of folks. That's what we were doing. We're kind of approaching folks saying, hey, how you doing? We just want to let you know this is going to be a heavy weekend. Um, but we want to let you know they're calming spaces. And this is sort of the spiel that we're doing. And she responded, one of the young ladies responded, well, we're just tell, here to tell people that they're saved and they should join our church. And just, what is this whole spiel? Now, when I was younger, and for a very brief time, my mother was in Jehovah's Witnesses, so that's where we went. She went to the Kingdom Hall. I will tell you that experience, number one, left me very traumatized. I didn't realize that until many years later when my mother ended up joining the Lutheran Church, an ELCA church, and all the questions and fears I had about God. And this interaction with these people passing out these tracts, not flyers, but tracts. Um, trying to save people and I wonder do people realize it's okay when we go out as people of faith do we really have to save is that our first inclination of trying to save somebody trying to get people to come to Jesus should that be the first thing we're worried about because you don't know who you're encountering you don't know what kind of trauma, the religious trauma they've been through. And I was just really disturbed by that. But I held my peace. And what I really liked is our community organizers told them, she's like, well, I know that's what you're at, you know, thank you for telling us that we are, and she said, we are just out here telling people that they're loved and that we have common spaces. That's what she reiterated to them. I know, so last year when all this happened, I had a conversation with my bishop, Bishop Lee Miller of Upstate New York Senate, and said, here, remember seeing a church, like they came all the way from Jersey, and they were out there. 
And he was like, why are you all here? This is not the time to prophesize. times. And I feel like people use tragedy to come and say, well, this is your reminder that you need to be in church, you need to be saved. That's not what we're supposed to do. The second, we had encountered a guy named Grady, um, who's our community organizer knew him. He was delightful. He was like, I'm not messing with none of this cross stuff and nothing like that. That's not what I'm into. But still very vibrant. He said, I saw this guy coming here and this, we got this big cross. What do you got that death cross here for? You know, again, our focus was just to hear people out, regardless of what they said. And just be present with them, right? That was the whole point. So... We get back over to Tops, and there's more activity, there's more tents and everything that I'm setting up. And I see this guy. He looks like he's from the suburbs or maybe perhaps a rural town. He's white. He's erected a cross, a huge cross, in front of the memorial at Tops. And he's just standing out there holding this humongous cross. And I hate to say this, what it reminded me of was a cross that was erected at the insurrection. Like he's out there holding this cross and it just felt very blasphemous. Because you don't know who lives in the in the east side in fact 78 percent of the east side population is african-american but we also have a number of mix of like immigrants and refugees that are in the area somalia burmese etc so there is a muslim population in fact there are at least i think two mosques that i have seen driving through the east side you can be out there and you can be out there as a representative of who you are as a faith person but you don't have to be blasphemous and be opportunistic by erecting a cross, which I just deem would be really, really, really inappropriate. That memorial was for those 10 people. Who knows where their faith lies? I, I know a number of people who are part of CGN community knew the people that had died, the Jefferson 10. And so a lot of them did go to some of the same churches, and that's, that's great. But I don't, like I said, I think it was disingenuous. I felt like it was a, a display of, and this was someone not in the community, not from the community, probably not from the city, the neighborhood, nothing like that. And he just stood there in front of the memorial as if to show off himself, holding onto this enormous cross. And a number of us were kind of outraged, but we kind of just sort of held it in, walked past. We talked to some of the top executives out there, letting let them know that they need to also give these common spaces flyers to their employees in case they needed a place to just be for tomorrow. I mean, or even for today, if they were going to be out there and having to work, they could stop by one of these common spaces and do that work. I think in this country, we've equated being a good citizen by being a good Christian. We ignore all the other faith expressions. When even when we gather as nonprofits and faith nonprofits, Christianity sometimes tends to be the overarching presence and identity. And in reality, when we're a non-for-profit, that means that any and everyone, no matter how you worship Creator, no matter how you identify, who you are, who your culture, how you speak your language, the common goal is we're siblings in humanity. The common goal is that we're trying to work together and work against those forces that are trying to divide us, namely the empire. So today, I had mixed emotions, although the conversation that we had 
felt like the community really wanted to speak and were speaking and how our job was to be their cheering section as they empower themselves to demand better. There's still only one tops on the east side. There are 90,000 people that live on the east side and there's still one grocery store. People came, they did their thing, and then they left after three months. There's still disparity. There's still a need. And that's why CGN does what we do, not only for the neighborhood, but also really for, also too, for college students, because whether y'all realize it or not, some of these students that are in some of our universities come from the east side, and they're also too struggling. Like, it's all tied in. When I came back, I really was struggling with my emotion because I didn't like what I had seen. But what I was thankful for was Reverend Denise Walden's leadership with voice. I'm thankful for Tyrell Ford, his leadership, for Dantanya or Didi as she's called, for her leadership today, for Rabbi Jonathan and his leadership, although we didn't get a chance to see each other. I was thankful for the couple of folks that I met that is a part that are part of the upstate New York City. Lisa, Miranda, Kristen. Like it was amazing to see them. Like I put out a call and said, yo, y'all need to be out here. And they came out. Lisa came from a very far away. I'm thankful and grateful that they're here. I'm thankful and grateful for our for our conference dean who told our little churches a couple weeks ago, hey, do something for the Jefferson 10 in your churches. I know tomorrow is Sunday. I know it's Mother's Day. I'm gonna be preaching at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church tomorrow at 10.30 and it will be live stream on Holy Trinity's Facebook page. And I'm gonna incorporate both Mother's Day and the remembrance of the 514 of the Jefferson 10. Because even though it's Mother's Day, in this community, in this city, we cannot ignore the significance of what happened. We cannot go about our lives even this weekend without stopping and going, wow, has anything changed? Wow. Has the East Side seen relief? And I'm here to tell you that they have not. There has not been any relief. That's why these people, my community, my siblings, of the African diaspora are still hurting, are still impacted. So tomorrow, wherever you are, in your churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, whether you're out in creation, pause. Take a couple minutes. Read their names out loud. Sorry, motorcycle's going by my house. It's motorcycle season. Um, read their names out loud. Light a candle for them. Think about them. Pray for them and their families in the east side and the work that continues. And if that's all you do, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for praying for CGN, for our campus ministry, and for the work that we do, especially toward food justice and racial justice. This has been Saturday Night Live, Live at 5 with CG and Buffalo and myself, Pastor Kwame. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. If you are a mother, a grandmother, a great aunt, an aunt, a tia, etc., etc., a mother figure, thank you for nurturing all of us. God's peace.